Hello everyone, I want to welcome you while we take a look at Olive Tree's Bible software focusing on learning about the details of taking notes. So there's um, there's three different places you can take notes. The first place that you can take notes is from the text itself and here we have the English Standard Version open in the main window. The split window is hidden. So I always want to demonstrate that I can touch a verse and I get this verse options thing. One of the options is notes. And so here I've got a blank sheet of paper and I just want to type this is a demo note. By the way I have a wireless keyboard and if I didn't you would see it and I would be typing here but because I do um, there we go so we could save that. Um, just to show you, I can tap this little button, which is normally hidden, so you have to pull it down. And you just hit the tap to edit the title there. And so here, we'll call this first. And I'll type global, which we'll explain that in just a second. So we'll save that note. There we go. The icon exists beside the reference, James 2.13. Now, another way that we can do a note is to, is to get down into some details. And so I'll do a note um, beside the phrase, without mercy. So this note is strictly for that phrase. Again, we get a pop-up options, blank piece of paper. This is a second. note and I'll put uh, specific specific phrase we'll save that so there we go uh, um, and you know what while we're at it let me also show you this so if I pop the I keep missing it if I pop the icon this verse has a strong agreement in content to Matthew 5 verse 7. So here we typed a reference and uh, if we exit the note to get out of editing mode and go back into reading mode for the note we can just tap that reference and we can pull up a very 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 functional pop-up for that place in text. In fact, there's a note right there. I could, um, well, I think only references work. And I can go chase down those references if I want to. And I can use my back to go all the way back to the beginning. So we have uh, a global note and a specific note. I call that global because if I come over here and switch to a different translation of the Bible, the note that's anchored to a scripture reference is still there. This is our first demo note that we created, James 2.13 First Global. Now you understand why I named it Global. But the other icon for the second note created in the text is not there. We would have to go back to the version from which it was created in the English Standard Version to see that icon. All right, so just to show you all the different places that you can create a note, I will open my split window. There it is, opened. And just to show you, we, we tapped my notes to open the split window in notes. You know, if we were in recently opened, you know, this is normally like we're we got looking at our English study Bible, but here we can click open and go to my notes. Now my notes holds a flat list of all your notes and it's in alphabetical order. So here's our James 2.13 ESV specific phrase notes. Here's our James 2.13 first global note and I can look at those notes from right here. Also just to demonstrate I can hit this little expand icon at the very bottom make the note go to full page. Now the expand icon goes back to a shrink icon 
again, you know, I could open up a pop-up window here and see that same reference. I can go back to a shrink icon and shrink it back down to the split window. Um, I could also even do that from here. There, there's an expand icon. I could tap that, make that note go big, shrink it back down to the pop-up window, even though I'm looking at the same note twice and, and the other place. So going back to our flat list of notes, just to show you very quickly, I can hit this plus bar and create another note. Now if, if I'm at a sermon and the pastor's preaching from text over here, I can be typing text, you know, these notes are floating. And so tap to edit the title. Let me just call this floating. This is a third note we created. And so because they're in alphabetical order, there's our floating third note. I say it's floating because if I create a note over here, well another way to word it, unless I'm unless I'm creating a note from the text itself, it cannot be anchored to the text. Over here I can create a lot of notes, and I, and I did. In fact, these notes without titles were created and I didn't give them a title. The title comes from the default text, or specific text, if it's a phrase, it will append the translation of the text that, that it was created in. But here we have notes that were that were created while uh, someone was preaching and I didn't even give them a title. Here's one that's just accidentally created. Alright, so there's how we can create notes from the split window. A third place that we can create notes is behind the My Stuff icon panel. Again, this contains a lot of stuff, but it also contains all your annotations, which are bookmarks, notes, and highlights, or you can look at them separate. If I come in here and look at them, I can order them by date, and so the three notes that we created float to the top. So let's talk about organization. I can put this in a new folder, which I will name demo, and create that folder. Right now it's sitting in our root folder. These are created folders. The charts, maps, personal demo, and outer space were created by me and they're indented to show that they sit under here. I could put that in demo by moving the check mark from there to there. And so let me just do that for all our notes. Let me do it for this one too. Go back to folder. It's already created. So all I gotta do is just move the check mark. Go back and back. And then we'll do the last note that we did. So here we're talking about organizing your notes like you like them in folders. So here's our root folder annotations. Here's our subfolders or olive tree terminology subcategories. And here I can see that my go back accidentally hit the screen. Here I can see that our demo three annotation uh, are held in that folder. Another thing that you can do is um, well, let me just open this up and look at this one. Uh, just to show you very quickly, if I tap this reference, because this one's attached to the reference, if I tap that, then what I do is I force my screen to update its location. And if need be, if it has to switch which translation is open, it will do that. Let me go back in here real fast. I think I'm running out of time. But you can tag notes. Folders can sit in only one spot, but they can be tagged with many different tags. And I'll just tag this and show you that we've got three different tags. And if I come back and look at my note, at the bottom are these tags. I can pop bitterness, which is one of my tags, and see everything that has been tagged with bitterness. Or another way to do that is to come back all the way to the root of my stuff and then go into tags, find the bitterness tag, which there it is at the top, and we see something that was originally in bitterness and we also see the note that I created that was in bitterness. Well, I'm out of time. I'm hoping this is going to be short enough to post up to YouTube. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you learned something and uh, we'll see you next time.